Well, good morning, everyone. It's good to see you all here today. And uh, as we enter into church this morning, let's all stand to our feet. We're going to open up with a word of prayer. And uh, it's so nice to see each of you here today. And we have a special birthday today. Uh, Brother Larry, uh, where is he at this morning? I'm looking around for him. There he is. It's his birthday. 69 years old today. Happy birthday, Brother Larry. Amen. Well, let's pray and open up with a word of prayer, and uh, we're going to greet one another. And make sure you get around and tell Brother Larry happy birthday as we greet today. Amen. Father, we're so thankful, Lord, for this day that you've given to us. We thank you, Lord, that we're able to gather here together and celebrate this day with each of uh, the ones here this morning. We pray, Father, that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour a flood of your power and your spirit on us this morning. We thank you, Lord, and we celebrate your goodness, and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go greet one another. Tell Brother Larry back there, happy birthday. Amen.
thank you and we praise you this morning because you're good and faithful. Lord, we thank you that you never leave us or forsake us. So we lift up our praise to you, God, this morning in this house. Hallelujah. We will stand and rejoice. Oh, as one people, lift in one voice. You're worthy of glory. You're worthy of honor. You're worthy of praise. song I was thinking about those words worthy he is worthy and it was the question was what is worthy mean you know worth in something changes sometimes like I was explaining to the kids when all the kids want the same thing the price on that thing goes up whether it's worth it or not <clears throat> but you know the cool thing about God he's worthy all the time his value doesn't go up and down He's worth it, whether we're worshiping Him or not. 
He's still worthy and worthy of our praise. But the great thing is, people, we get to choose who we're going to worship. We get to choose if we think he's worthy enough to give him all our worship this morning. So I would like you to just lift your hands with me. Let's tell the Lord this morning, we believe, Lord, we know that you're worthy. <laughs> we know that you're worthy. And we know that you're worth it to give you all of our lives. We choose you this morning, God. We lay aside every distraction, everything that gets in our way that's competing for that spot of worthiness in our lives. And we know it's your spot, God. And so we focus this morning. We realign ourselves to that thought and say, Lord, take your place. You are worthy. <laughs> you are worthy. I remember your worthiness doesn't change. And so I've come to give you praise and glory and honor in this house. Oh, hallelujah. Father of kindness, you have poured out grace. That's why he's worthy. He brought me out of darkness. You have filled me with peace. Oh, the giver of mercy, you're my help in time of need. Oh, that's why we worship. So I can help but sing. Oh, he's faithful. Oh 
Hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands up together this morning and thank the Lord that his promises are yes in this place over your life today. Father, we're so thankful today that, Lord, that your promise is yes and it is amen. It's so today, Father, and I thank you, Lord, that we believe it. We receive it, Father. We stand upon it. Lord, it is in our spirit. It's in our soul this morning. Your promises, Lord, yes and amen by Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for healing our bodies today, Lord. Thank you for saving our lost loved ones. Thank you for encouraging us. Thank you for lifting us up, Father. Thank you for touching bodies. Thank you for encouraging hearts. Oh, Lord, we thank you in this place today for you are mighty and worthy, Father, and we give you glory in this place in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a great big shout and hand clap of praise. Hey. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Well, you may be seated this morning. Amen. Thank you to our musicians. Amen. Praise Him. Appreciate all you this morning. Amen. I'm going to ask our ushers if they will uh, come together. We're going to receive our morning tithe and offering, and we just uh, celebrate the Lord's goodness in this place today. And uh, thank you all for your faithfulness in giving and sowing uh, here. We just uh, continue to pray uh, that God will bless you over and above in an abundant way uh, for, all that, uh, your, uh, for all your giving and sowing and sacrifice and time. Amen in doing that. So uh, this morning as they come, uh, we're going to give some announcements here about some projects and things that we're doing. But after the end of the service for just a minute, there's just an item that we want to talk about. So uh, the board members will meet me in the adult Sunday school classroom. Uh, we're going to talk about an item real quick uh, after service. Uh, then tonight, 6 o'clock, we're going to be back in here celebrating the Lord. And uh, tonight, uh, Pastor Danae is going to preach. She hasn't preached around here for a while, so uh, she's going to preach here this evening. Amen. Well, let's pray and ask the Lord to bless this offering today. Heavenly Father, I'm so thankful, Lord, for the cheerful givers, uh, Lord, that are in this place. Lord, as we sacrifice and give, we're thankful that you have blessed us. I are thankful, Lord, that you've given us this opportunity that, Father, we can return to you an offering, a portion, God, that celebrates how faithful you are to us. And so, Lord, this morning as we sow, we pray a blessing over each person's life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, this morning, uh, Jonathan, you want to give an announcement today? Amen. He's going to talk to you about the project going on outside there, about the kindergarten class. And uh, we've got a lot of uh, good things going on. Good morning again. So we're going to try round two this time, and we're working. So uh, last week I mentioned about having these great and wonderful slides that fell apart for me. So uh, these are two of the classes uh, of the three that we're able to bless with everybody's donations from school supplies. So again, thank you. These were just the, the pictures that, uh, that we're able to take. So just wanted to show you guys how awesome it is. Honestly, uh, I left work a little early that day because uh, I wanted to be a part of this and it was super, super cool. Uh, so that's what we've done. And next is where we're headed. So uh, last week mentioned uh, Project 810, our outreach program. Uh, next one, Operation Do You Want to Build a Snowman? Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so we mentioned hats and gloves. Uh, there's approximately 300 students uh, at the one school that we're going to bless. Uh, so uh, children's sizes, we're just looking for basic hats, basic gloves, uh, because they have a shortage uh, winter after winter at this school. So uh, our final collection is going to be November 17th. So however you can bless, whether it's through actual donations or if it's even through funds, and if you designate it accordingly, uh, we will take that. So uh, just to put sort of uh, a rough number on there, even if we we're going to say 3 to $5 per student, you know, we're talking anywhere from $900 to $1,500 is, is really what we're looking for at the end of the day. So uh, that's a much bigger number than what we did even for our school supplies. But uh, we are all fully capable of doing that. I know that we can get there. Uh, and I will uh, we'll look forward to those donations. And uh, like I said, either through actual... Uh, product or monetary donations. So super excited to move on to our next project. Thank you.
And thank you, Jonathan. And thank you all for giving. And, uh, and every time we have a local outreach, uh, it also helps our kids' church. They talk about it back there. And it shows in them the importance of helping your neighbor, your community, and helping in missions. And uh, because missions is a uh, ongoing uh, project that we help fund and do, it never stops. The missions of Jesus Christ is to be hands and feet to help. Uh, when you're when someone's naked, he was the one that was there. When you were poor, you took me in. These different things. These are when Jesus uh, uh, comes to our house, and we have the opportunity to help bring him. Uh, to others. So uh, this morning, we thank you for all that you're doing and all the gifts that you give to help these missions. Amen. And missions, one of my favorite missionaries is going to be with us next week in a Sunday evening service. It's his birthday, Brother Thomas. And we want everybody to come out next Sunday night because Brother Thomas is going to be sharing. He's been traveling around in, uh, around India, He's been, but he's been traveling around Michigan, and uh, he's been uh, uh, itinerating and sharing, and he's going to be here next Next Sunday night, and um, I know that uh, he's uh, he's excited about being here. We told him it's his birthday. We've got a lot of uh, big plans for him after the service. We're going to have a birthday uh, celebration for him. So uh, make sure you come, and we're going to celebrate with a fellowship uh, after next Sunday evening service. Amen. All right. Well, uh, if you will stand with me as we open up the Bible today to John chapter seven. In John chapter seven, Jesus talks about the uh, Jesus talks about thirstiness. He talks during the time of the Feast of Tabernacles, and as he's talking about the Feast of Tabernacles today, is the conclusion, the ending of the Jewish uh, holiday of of the fall festivals of the Day of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, the uh, Feast of Tabernacles, and as they as we celebrate with. Uh, the nation of Israel about their new year and the new times that they're entering into, uh, it's mindful for us to look at our time. And what did Jesus say? Last week we talked about how Jesus said that his blood is enough and sufficient to save. Now watch what Jesus says today on this last and greatest day of the feast. John chapter 7 verse 37, it says, in the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But he, this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified." But many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said, Of a truth, this is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Shall Christ come out of Galilee? Father, I thank you for your word today, and I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you give us this call. Lord, you give us this cry today, Father, that if we're thirsty, we come unto you and we drink today. And so, Father, we're coming this morning in this place, and we're asking, Father, for your anointing and your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated this morning. So there are streams of living water that Jesus want to give today. And so this whole main idea of this sermon about uh, this Feast of Tabernacles is talking about the Spirit of God and the Spirit of God that brings revival to us because the main significance of the feasts here is that God's calling his people together for a spiritual awakening. He's calling people together for repentance and through judgment and for enjoyment. You know, he doesn't want to see you uh, uh, just always facing the justice, the judgment of God without receiving the enjoyment that God has to give to you. And so during this festival, uh, it is a time for us to be spiritually awakened and repent and enjoy the goodness of of the Lord, because uh, it was on this day, the Feast of Tabernacles was a seven-day event, with the eighth day being the uh, greatest day, being the Feast of the Israelites dw dwelling in little booths, Feast of Tabernacle, Feast of Booths. And it was during this feast that the Israelites would dwell in these temporary booths uh, that were made uh, according to the Jewish Talmud and, uh, or the writings of the Jewish directing them uh, how to be uh, created and crafted for this time. And the purpose was to remind Israel of God's provision, which brought them through Egypt, out of Egypt, 
into the promised land, which typifies, uh, typifies uh, to us deliverance. There is a deliverance in the name of Jesus today. And Jesus is talking to us that during this time in this setting, Jesus signifies to us that he is our deliverer. He is our deliverance. Just as the Israelites looked unto Moses, who served them as the prophet and the priest and the king over Israel, so we look to Jesus and we see Jesus is our deliverer who can break yokes and destroy bondages. It's because of his blood that we can have forgiveness of sin and then not only have forgiveness of sin, but enjoy the goodness of God that he says, if you come and believe, you can drink and you can receive the rivers of living water that he has to fill you with today. It's the enjoyment of God. So during this feast, there was rituals that would uh, celebrate uh, the uh, and, and would typify what salvation and sanctification and infilling and consecration is. And as we look at this uh, today, I want us to continue to look at these verses, but think about what Jesus is doing here. During this festival on this day, people would gather from all over and they would come to, uh, they would come to the city here and they would come as they would come. Uh, they would leave their booth and they would take part in a special service and they would dress in a festive way. They would play music in a special way and they would come together and as they come together, uh, they would uh, have wine and water and they would do a water pouring ceremony where they would pour wine and the water together. And as they pour the wine and the water together, the water of the word always, uh, uh, the water in the scripture will always remind us of the word of God and the power of the word. In Ephesians chapter five, verse 26, this is what uh, it talks to us about, about the word. It says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. So they would come to uh, this time uh, during this ceremony where the priest would pour out the wine and pour out the water. And as they pour out wine and water, it's, uh, uh, it also in Psalm 119 verse 9, it talks to us that it's only by the washing of God's word that we can be made clean. It says, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways, but by taking heed unto thy word. And so as they would gather the water, as they gather the wine, as they gather the uh, worshipers together, uh, they would, uh, we would understand that uh, they begin to pour this water. And the water also speaks to us about the activity and the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so what does the Holy Spirit do? But the Holy Spirit is the one that makes the word of God alive to us and makes it personal to us and allows for us to be cleansed and encouraged and direction to take part in our life. The Holy Spirit's the one that brings conviction to us by the word of God. So the word of God, the power of God, the revealed word to us today, that word is made alive in our hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so as they would arise, the priest, and they would go to the altar, he would be joined with another priest carrying wine for the drink offering. And they would come to two funnels and they would come at, and it would lead down to the base of the altar at the temple and they would pour the water in and they would pour the wine in. And so the water is the word. The wine represents the new wine of the Holy Spirit. And as the priest pours the water and they pour the wine, the people would begin to shout and they would begin to lift their hands. And after the water's poured out, they would begin to recite this chant of Psalms that focused on God's faithfulness and God's promises. And they would believe that those faith, that the faithful God would be faithful faithful to his promises that he had given to the nation of Israel. And so the pouring of water signified that there was going to be prayers that were going to be, uh, uh, that God was going to grant for an abundant rain that was necessary for growing crops during their year. They believed that God was going to bless them for it. And it was a climax day. It was the highest day, the great and last day of the feast. And then after it all settles down, here comes a voice crying. Not a weak, timid voice, but Jesus stood up in John 37 and uh, John 7, 37, and it says, and he cried. It wasn't a weak, timid voice where he was talking about, come to me, you know. But he was speaking in a loud voice, crying out, if anyone's thirsty, let him come and drink from me. And out of their belly, if you believe in me, 
rivers of living water will flow from within them. Jesus in this time was not going through this ceremony, interrupting the ceremony. Sometimes we think about God and we think about how he interrupts our life. Well, if you come to Jesus and you believe in Jesus, he's going to interrupt you from all the, the fun that you still got ahead of you. You're too, young to, you're too young to give your life to Jesus. You can't give your life to Look at all the things you're going to miss out on. But rather, Jesus is not interrupting the ceremony. Jesus doesn't interrupt our life. What he does is he's standing there and he's crying out, and he's interpreting what this ceremony is. And so when Jesus comes into our life, he doesn't come interrupting our life, but he comes to interpret your life in a whole new way. And so when you give your life to him, when you believe on him and you receive him, it's not what you're giving up and what you're missing out on because of the interruption of understanding Jesus is your savior. Now you have to follow him and you got to stop doing this, that, and the other. But it's rather your whole life has been reinterpreted Interpreted by the word of God, the power of Jesus, the blood of the lamb. You're made new. Old things are passed away. Everything's made new by the blood of the lamb. And he interprets your life in the way that you ought to walk and the way you ought to go. And it's exciting. It's exciting for us to live that way today. Understanding that you've got a new way of life. That, that road that leads to heaven that he's got prepared for you. That place in heaven he's got prepared for you. That destiny and the purpose he has prepared for you. Jesus doesn't interrupt our lives. Jesus doesn't interrupt our ceremonies. He, doesn't, he interprets it for us to understand what the meaning of these things are in our life. And so it's, he tells us that it's a celebration of God's goodness and God's provision. God's good, goodness and provision brought us Jesus because we were on a destiny that just led to hell. There was no redemption for us. For the Jews, they could have the, uh, they could have the high priest and the atoning blood of animal sacrifices. But for the Gentiles, we were left outside unless you came and joined Judaism. In fact, that's why there was such a big uh, uh, issue after Jesus left. Should you become a Jew and join Judaism before you can become a Christian? And Paul says it's Jesus' blood is sufficient for Jew and Gentile, anyone who believes in him, uh, Paul says. So it comes to us like this. If we come to Jesus and we believe, he makes us new. And it's out of the goodness and the provision of God that Jesus has come. And he's come standing full of emotion, full of intensity. The Lord of glory is speaking at that point, saying, saying to us, all who are thirsty, come. It's just like in the verses uh, that follow in verse 40 and 41. You know that it got people's attention. Because after Jesus said this, it says this, that on hearing these words, people said, well, he's a prophet. Other people said, no, he is the Christ. He's the Messiah. He, but other people still yet said, but can Christ come out of Galilee? So when they heard these words, it touched them and gripped their heart. So it was in this context that they understood the claim that Jesus was making. He was making an open invitation that day that Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one. And if you would come unto him, you should receive this living water flowing out of you. See, Jesus knew. This is what Jesus knew. Jesus knew that on, on the next day, tomorrow, he knows that tomorrow they were only going to have a memory of the ceremony that they took part in. But Jesus said this. Jesus said, I'm not just going to give them a memory of the, of the ceremony that they took part in. I'm going to let them experience the reality of what this ceremony means. I'm going to let them experience a reality. And so Jesus cries out, if you're thirsty, come. If you're thirsty, come. See, it's just like in Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55 says this, oh, if you're thirsty... Come to the waters, and if you have no money, don't worry. You go ahead and come, buy, yeah, eat, come, buy wine and milk without money 
and without price. Because this is what he's saying to us. If you're thirsty, come. He says, why do you spend money for that which is not bread and your labor for that that doesn't satisfy? Hearken diligently unto me and, and eat that which is good and let your souls be delighted. In its fatness. So this is what Jesus is saying to us. He says, if you're thirsty, come. You're going to receive living water. Jesus is the living water that's come down out of heaven. And he says, to all who are thirsty, come. And it says, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. There is a difference here this morning between people who are empty and people who are thirsty. And Jesus is talking to people who are thirsty this morning and saying, if you're thirsty, you've got a mechanism inside of you that tells you if you're thirsty. I mean, Americans, we get it mixed up. We think we're hungry when we're thirsty, right? And that's one of the things I love. When you go down to Florida, if you stay in Sister Dorothy's house on the refrigerator, I'm going to tell this little story. She's got a note plastered on the refrigerator. She says, you're not hungry, you're thirsty. Drink a glass of water. That's what's on her refrigerator. See? But we think we're hungry when we're thirsty. And that's what we need to understand. We need the water oh, to saturate our body to keep us going. We need more than we think we do. And our body has a way of telling us when we're thirsty, we need to get to some water. And Jesus is saying, are you thirsty? Are you thirsty for something that satisfies you? Then you come unto me and you will be filled with living water. Out of your bellies will flow living water. If you come unto me, you'll be satisfied. If you come unto me, you'll receive an awakening and you'll receive a revival and you'll receive spirit empowerment that's going to change you, that's going to open up your life into a whole new dimension and what you were searching for and what you were longing for and how you were dry and thirsty and how you were feeling this way. He says, I can fill you you up and I can satisfy you. So if you're thirsty, come to the water. If, you, if you're thirsty, come unto me and I'll fill you up, Jesus says. Because we look around and we say, how is it? How is it that we can, uh, we can have a revival today? How is it uh, that Jesus is speaking to, these, to this crowd of people this way? And how is he speaking to us in this room today? What Jesus is trying to just tell us is to stop enduring religion and start enjoying a revival relationship with him. Stop enduring religion. Religion that takes us down a path that limits the power and the goodness of God in our life. But rather enjoy a relationship that brings a revival and a, and a new life that kindles a fire inside of us. This is what Jesus is saying to us. And, and you know what? We need to realize that the secret to the Holy Spirit empowerment, the secret to receiving an outpouring of the Holy Spirit is not, a, not just a 10-step plan because we make it more complicated than Jesus said. Jesus said this. He says, this is the way Jesus said for you to receive water for money that you do not have, bread for money with money that you do not have, uh, that leaves you uh, that leaves you empty and not satisfied this is how you're satisfied he says this this is the plan that jesus says he says this hunger and thirst after righteousness we're talking about just coming to the lord jesus and jesus keeping it simple saying i am the th i am the source if you're thirsty come if you have a shallow thirst it gives a shallow satisfaction. We try to substitute our water for other beverages. You try to do these uh, fountain beverages and things, and, and it leaves people even thirstier, and then it gets them even emptier. But when you're thirsty, you get, need the replenishment of the water, of the, of the Word of God and of the Lord Jesus. And he says this, if you're going to be an empowered Christian, a spirit-filled Christian, you've got to get to the place where we focus on thirstiness. See, we're empty before we come to Christ. We have a void, but Jesus says, I'll fill that void. But then, so instead of focusing as a Christian on the emptiness part always, Jesus fills that. 
So we can take care of that. But then Jesus focuses on another aspect. He knows that when he fills a void, it can still leave you thirsty at times. You still get thirsty. And so that's why Jesus focuses on this part then. He says, if you thirst, come, come to me. They that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. Jesus said that in the Beatitudes. One of the very first mentions of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount where he's standing, talking to the people as a king over his kingdom. He gives us the Beatitudes and it says, if you're hungry and you're thirsty after right standing with God, you come to him and you will be completely satisfied. If you're looking for a right relationship with God, you're gonna find it in Jesus Christ. Come to me, all our hunger and thirst and I'll give you satisfaction, Jesus says. The source of our spirit empowerment comes from Jesus Christ. If anyone's thirsty, let him come unto me. Come unto me. Jesus is the only way today, church. He's the only way of salvation. He's the only way we can come if you're thirsty today to be filled. He's the only way. See, Jesus has always been the source of life. He's the only source of life. See, sometimes we think, well, if I can just clean up my act and get holy enough, then I can, get, I can get to church, I can get to Christ. See, holiness is not the way to Christ. Christ is the source and Christ's the way to holiness. And see, there's nothing, there's nothing good. I mean, there is something good about taking a bath and getting cleaned up on the outside. Don't get me wrong, but, but if you're still dirty and wretched on the inside it's eventually going to spill out to the outside. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So holiness is not the way to Christ. Christ is the way to get holy in your life. See, Christ, revival, and spirit empowerment and newness of life is not the way to Christ. Christ is the way to get to revival. Jesus is the way to get satisfied with your thirst. Jesus is the source. He's always been the source. He'll always be the source. And Jesus gives us an open invitation. He says, if you're thirsty, come. See, right, there's a, there's a, there's a responsibility on our part. It just isn't going to be handed. It's handed out to all those who do something, and that's come. See, it's not, if you're thirsty, just sit right there, and everything's going to be okay. He says, if you're thirsty, come to me. Come to me, he says. If you're thirsty, come and drink. If you're thirsty, come and drink. Well, how do we drink? He says, it's by faith. You drank in by faith. He says, as those that believe on me, as the scripture says, out of your bellies will flow rivers of living water. How do we drink? We drink by faith. We drink by faith because we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We believed in the Lord. It saves us. It fills the emptiness. But our soul, as we're walking in this world, will get thirsty. And we need the living water to saturate us and to fill us. And so he says, come to me. And if you come and you can come and you can drink. Just as we come to him by faith for salvation, we come to him and we drink by faith. By faith. It's really hard. Some people have a hard time of understanding that they can come to Jesus and drink. They can come to Jesus and say a prayer and have faith that they're saved. But they think that they've left them for them to walk in this world all by themselves. But Jesus said that there's a drink for you to come and experience. There's life-giving water for you to come and enjoy. And you've got to come by faith and you've got to take a drink. See, if we're going to wait until we've got enough time to come to Jesus and to seek God, we're going to be waiting the rest of our lives to get satisfied with the living water. If we wait until all the pressures and the stresses and the strains of life are gone, well, they change they change by decade. Uh, you're trying to get 
out of school when you're young. Then you're trying to get your career started when you're uh, in life. And then you're trying to move from a career to become successful to raise in a family. You're trying to raise a family. If I can wait till, Lord, I'm going to come when I can get the kids out of the house, right? Then you get the kids out of the house. The next thing you know, we've got all these aches and pains that we got to take care of. And you start taking care of those. And Lord, if I can just get through the stress and the relief from what I've got going on, I'm going to come to you and I'm going to drink of you and I'm going to do and I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, Lord. I just got to get through the stresses and the pains and all. Guess what? It's going to waste all of our time, the rest of our days, waiting for new times to change. That's why Jesus said, uh, the word of God tells us that Jesus wants us to come, come to him. And the Bible says, today is the day of salvation. You get saved today. Don't wait. Come to Jesus. Drink of the living water today. Today's the day for you to come. Today's the day. Everything else is still going to be there. You're still going to have pains in your body. You're still going to have pains in your family. You're still going to have pains in your checkbook. You're still going to have pains in your life. You're still going to have pains that always are there. But when you come to Jesus, he can saturate you. He can fill you up. The life-giving water is going to flow out of you. And when the Spirit flows out of you, you're going to look at you and say you've got all the same problems I've got but yet how are you satisfied how is water flowing from you it's because I've come and I've drank of the well of Jesus Christ today that's why the scripture says out of the wells come up joy of salvation water and wine mixed together represents that, that wells of joy springing up in our salvation today we're here this morning We need to take a drink from Jesus. If you're thirsty, come to Jesus today. I've got one more passage in Ezekiel that I want to share with you today. And it's Ezekiel 47. And it's about the prophet Ezekiel. He's he's seeing a river. Because when Jesus is talking about the river springing forth out of you, he's he's talking one of the most powerful rivers uh, that we can read is here in Ezekiel 47. And it talks like this. And it says... Afterward, he brought me to the door of the house, and behold, there was water that issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. And the forefront of the house stood towards the east, and the waters came down from under the right side of the house and the south side of the altar. And he brought me out of the way of the gate northward and led me about the way without unto the utter gate. By the way that looks eastward, and behold, there ran out water on the right side. And when the man had the line in his hand, went forth eastward. He measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the ankles. And he measured a thousand, and brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the knee. And he measured again And he brought it out, and the waters were to the loins. And afterward, he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over, for the waters were risen. Waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. One of the most powerful descriptions of the prophet being taken out by the Lord, the angel, here in this book of Ezekiel, is talking about how from the altars spring forth a river and it goes forth. And he took the man of God out from the banks of the river. He took him out some thousand cubits and it was around his ankles. A thousand cubits to his knees, a thousand cubits to his waist, a thousand more cubits, a river that he could not pass over that he came engulfed in. And this is what the Lord's saying to you today. People around Jesus standing on the banks at the altar where the water is getting ready to be poured out and a mighty river getting formed. And it's all those that will come to him. He says, if you come to me, I'm going to take you deeper than you ever think you could imagine. And there comes a time in your life that as you come to Jesus and drink, we move from the banks of the river 
where we're watching everybody else get revived, where we're watching everybody else lift their hands, where we're watching everybody else being prayed for, where we're watching everybody else get their blessing and get their miracle and get their breakthrough and get their deliverance. And we come to Jesus and he takes us out into the water and it's around our ankles and, we're, and we get uh, acclimated here at the, at the ankle deep and, and we're feeling the goodness of the Lord saturating us and it feels good to be out into the water and, and then you go out a little bit deeper and it comes to your knees and a little bit deeper and it's at your waist and all this time you're still in control of how you go in and how you can walk back up to the bank you can get out anytime you want but there comes a time when you get overflown in the river where it gets over your head and the Holy Spirit just uh, is directing you when you go out yet another thousand cubits it's deeper with distance our relationship with the Lord and the, through the power of the Holy Spirit and he wants us today to not stay on the banks. He wants us today, don't just go ankle deep. Don't just go in where you still feel like you've got all this control and you can be self-sufficient. I'm going in and out and in and out and I can do it when I want and I can still be in control. But he says, surrender your life. Come to Jesus and drink. He's going to take you farther than you ever thought he could. He's going to take you where it's over your head, where you rely on him. At that point, it's not the prophet going into the water, but it's that the prophet becomes part of the river. There is a major river that he just gets engulfed in. And the Lord's looking to us today and says, it's not about you and how far and how far you can go and still be you. But he says, I want you to go out so far that the Lord increases in you. And you begin to allow the Lord to increase and you to decrease, and you come to the point when you're over your head in the river, and the Holy Spirit leads and guides and directs, and he takes you where he wants you. That's a surrender of a will to say, Lord, I'll lead where you follow. Uh, I'll lead where you send me. I'll go where you send me. See, it is a power that tells us that we need to Say that uh, standing on the bank is good. You can experience what other people are doing in the river. But Jesus is saying, if you're thirsty, there's only one way to handle that. And that's to come to me. Step out in the water and go a little deeper today. See, we need a healthy dose of the Holy Spirit's empowerment to fill us and to flow through us. And the gateway to filling the empowerment starts in the altar. Yeah, Ezekiel said the river flowed right at the altar. They poured out the oil and the wine and it flowed down right to the altar. You want to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit? It's time to make an altar in your life and watch the altar change and alter your situation. Change and alter your circumstance. Watch it change and alter your life uh, and watch it make you and renew you and refresh you and restore you and make you who God intended for you to be today. But it starts in the altar. I don't know if I can come to an altar. Only people who sing can come to the altar. Don't believe that. People that sin need to come to the altar. Ask God to forgive us. People, people uh, that don't need to come to ask for forgiveness, we still need to come and ask for forgiveness. But we, still, we need to come to the altar and just say, God, I need to drink. I need to get in the river. I need to get into this empowerment of your Holy Ghost. I need to get to where the glory being poured out. And in Ezekiel, he said, start at the altar. Here's an altar in our church. Make an altar where you're at, in your home, in your car, wherever you're at. Just say, Lord, I'm here at the altar and I want to be empowered. I want to come and drink. I need to be filled. I'm thirsty. I'm longing for you. Those people in the desert, they're they go out in the desert and after some time of not drinking, they begin to start hallucinating. Mirages, oasis start popping up. They go and it's a mirage, it's a hallucination, it's an illusion. But Jesus says to us that he can make a way in the jungle. He can put waters in the desert. And so all you have to do is say, come, you come to Jesus. There's water for you to receive today. There's water for you to receive 
It'll cleanse you, restore you, refresh you, and you'll become an agent that has living water flowing that'll be a witness to people around you. I'm going to close this morning with this if our musicians make their way back. As the, as the Holy Spirit uh, is uh, moving upon the prophet, the prophet becomes part of the water and and the man of God sur surveys the powerful transforming power of the river and that when he gets in over his head, he becomes part of the river. And when we come in sync with the Holy Spirit, we need to understand that another part of the river is where the river flows. It's a healing river and it begins to transpor uh, transform the desert from a desert to a growing forest. And so when the Holy Spirit's flowing, he transforms our situation from barrenness to fruitfulness. Barrenness to fruitfulness. We live in a barren time. You live in a barren situation. You say that I've got barrenness all around me everywhere I look. But inside of you, when you come to drink of Jesus, here comes living water flowing from you. That living water flowing from you takes the barrenness away and puts a growing forest in its stead. It heals as it flows. You've got a living water that can be poured out inside of you that can touch people. It's gonna change the barrenness into fruitfulness today. But it all starts by people saying, Lord, I'm thirsty and I'm coming. I wanna take a drink. So I'm gonna ask you this morning, do you want to take a drink of Jesus this morning? Come to me, all you that thirsty. I'll give you living water. You believe in me, you'll be satisfied, Jesus said. Let's all stand to our feet this morning and let's all come. Let's all come to the altar this morning and you can come and kneel, come and stand, come and sit. But let's all come to the altar and let's lift our hands or pray, however, and just say, Lord Jesus, I'm coming for another drink. I'm coming for a deeper well. I'm coming to get refreshed. I'm coming to be restored. I'm coming to be renewed. I'm coming to receive of the Holy Spirit. I want the Holy Ghost flowing through me today, Lord. I want life-giving water to change my barrenness to fruitfulness. I want to be empowered from on high. I need you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's sing together as it pray.
in our soul. It's given us a refreshing to help us in our life. See, church should be a place of refreshing for you. Equipping of the saints for the ministry that lies right outside these doors. So thank God that he's fulfilled his promise for salvation and restoration. Amen. Father, I thank you today. We've come to the well. We've drunk of you, Jesus. You satisfy. Thank you, Lord, that it's not with the price of money. It's not the price of animal sacrifices. But it's only by you, Lord, your grace and favor. We're coming without money. We're coming without animal sacrifice. We're coming, Father, just our own self, presenting ourselves to you. And we thank you, Lord, you're filling us today. So, Father, we thank you for the refreshing of the Holy Spirit. And now as we leave this place, we walk in the power of the Spirit to allow the life-giving waters of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit to gush forth from us today and touch this world so that we can see others brought into the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, God bless you all. I hope you have a wonderful day today. Take some time and shake hands and greet one another. We'll see you all back tonight, six o'clock, amen. And any board members, I'll see you in the... Adults in a school class.